Hello, all you gorgeous creatures. Welcome back to the Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Rose, and on this show, we talk about all things pertaining to freedom, mind, body, spirit. If you don't know me and you're new to this, well, I am a musician, primarily jazz. I play piano, guitar. I do a bunch of different things. I dabble. Uh, I want a longer life. I would like to live an extra 100 years just so I could learn more instruments and learn everything. I would love to be a drummer and play the saxophone, and I used to play the flute, the clarinet, the harp. I've done all kinds of things pertaining to music, but my primary focus is jazz. Although I do DJ house music too. So um, it kind of started randomly. I went into a uh, venue that I was actually auditioning for to play music, to play like seaside jazz. It's on the ocean down here in South Florida. And I went in and I was like, you guys don't need a musician. You need a DJ. And they're like, well, can you do it? And I had already you know, I know music theory, I understand the basic principles of it. And I was like, I mean, I think so. <laughs> so I taught myself how to DJ uh, out of necessity. And I loved it and fell in love with the music. And I already understood, you know, the basic principles of like, how to transition into different keys and the BPMs, I already understood the basic elements of it. So for me, it was easy. And I already what I think I have good taste in music. So, cause I already knew how to read a room. I know how to execute, um, you know, bring crowds in. Cause I'd already been performing for a long time with, you know, live, live singing and stuff like that. So, so I love DJing. I saw something recently in the news about Grimes and I was utterly disturbed by how people have been treating her. So if you haven't heard yet, Grimes totally on a catastrophic level, bombed her Coachella performance. And I, there were so many things that she could have done differently. And I'll go over that with you, especially if you love music and you DJ yourself, whether it's a hobby or you're doing this professionally, there are definitely things as a performer that she should have done differently. And she could have, in my opinion, recovered the set and people probably wouldn't have been the wiser. Um, I was quite appalled by how people have been treating her online. And yes, she gets paid millions of dollars. Yes, she is, you know, a professional performance artist. I understand that there are things that you can expect to come with the territory, like a little bit of criticism. But the way people have been bashing her and calling her a fake DJ, I'm blown away by. Like, let me just clarify this. There are no fake DJs. If you play music... <laughs> and someone enjoys it, yourself, your cat, a friend, a house party, on the radio, if you play open mics and you don't even get paid for it, you're a DJ, okay? Like, there are no fake DJs. Yes, there is an argument between some people say, like, you shouldn't use auto mix, like we're the auto sync. So for people who don't DJ, there's a button on your computer or your, you know, turntables where you can auto mix the beats, which will make a nice smooth transition for you. And then there are people who are like, that's cheating. You should learn to do it by ear. Yes, you should for your own pleasure, enjoyment and continuing education. Like, I'm a musician, but I'm constantly still taking lessons and improving. I actually start vocal lessons this Wednesday. I'm learning how to sing a really tough song for myself. I'm going back in with a vocal coach and working on things that I need to improve because I'm a student of life and I will always be learning. I want to take drum lessons someday so I can play, be good enough to just play Led Zeppelin covers. Like that, that that's a random goal of mine. But yes, you should always be continuing your education. But with that being said, all a DJ is, you're a disc jockey. Like if you are <laughs> if you are playing two songs and you change the song to another song and someone's enjoying it, even if it's just you, you're a DJ. I hate this like tear them down, you know, just claw at people and just bash them into smithereens. I can't stand that shit. Listen, put your pitchforks away, okay? Like, I, I always go back to the man in the arena quote If you got, by Roosevelt. If you haven't got, read that yet, I, I should probably pull it up, actually. I don't have my glasses on. I should have pulled it up, but 
the man in the arena. Boop. Let's see. Man in the arena quote. Here it is. Okay. I love this. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how strong the man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. So the whole point of this, there we go. So to sum it up, the man in the arena is basically about, you know, fuck the critics. And you'll never know greatness if you're the one who's on the sidelines, basically pointing out how hard somebody else stumbled and failed. And really, there is no such thing. If you talk to any super successful person, any millionaire, billionaire, CEO, anybody who is done and accomplished something great in their lives, they will tell you that there is no such thing as a failure, that every single time they didn't really hit the target, it was just a place for them to actually improve and become a better person. Now, I do believe that all critics are assholes and they are resentful and jealous because they wish that they had the balls to get in the arena, to get on the stage, to do what other people who are accomplishing great things have the balls to do. They don't have the courage to do that. So guess what? That makes them cowards. Screw the critics. Screw what people have to say. And people who consider themselves to be artists, musicians, DJs, um, anybody who has any sort of artistic inclination for you to be so short-sighted and to be so cruel to somebody else who clearly had one of the biggest blunders that I've ever seen. It was really bad. I'll play the clip here. Actually, I'm just going to play the clip real quick. That was pretty bad. It was really cringy. I felt like throwing up watching that because I know what she was going through. I have things that happen all the time during sets. I mean, I can't even... I've lost count of how many cringy moments that I've had where my equipment failed, my deck has stopped working, I had wardrobe malfunctions. Just the other day, I had a really big gig um, for very top tier, top level, like I'm talking like multi-million dollar mansions that I perform at. And these people pay me a lot of money to make sure that their guests get the best entertainment. So I have to be on my A game. So <laughs> I bought, I, I'm a plan person. I like to have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I will have backup plans for my backup plans for my backup plans because this is real life. Like things do happen in real life. Technical errors occur. It's also mercury retrograde. I know many people don't believe in that for for the people that do though, you know what I'm talking about. Last night I was trying to film a podcast with a girlfriend and our equipment just didn't work. The platform didn't work. The other day I had a big DJ gig and I knew I was going to be outside. So I just bought a brand new subwoofer to alleviate some of the pressure from my other DJ speakers. So it basically adds more bass onto the floor and saves me from blowing my speakers out. Well, guess what? I didn't have time to test it out. It came in the mail like that day and I get to the gig and the freaking speaker doesn't work and I'm losing my mind. I also started right then and there as I'm trying to hook up my speaker outside in a beautiful dress and everyone there started having female problems. So I'm like really inside wanting to just like just break my own neck and fall down and give up, but I can't do that. So I have to have backup plans. So I got to figure it out on the spot, rearrange things, go back to the kitchen, rearrange some things. And that happens all the time. So what could Grimes have done differently? I'll tell you what I would do differently. First of all, I know that she is a person who is very vocal about her open about her um, anxiety and her mental health issues. And 
a lot of artists are weird. A lot of artists are just odd people. They're very, you know, in the ethers. They're very abstract thinkers um, because they're always in their creative energy. So they're not focused on socially what's acceptable, like as far as etiquette, how to communicate properly with other people. They're more in their creative space. Unless you've really worked on your personality and learned how to, you know, become um, better at public speaking and how to communicate effectively. Unless you've done, um, I understand why is she is so awkward and she really was. It, it was bad. I mean, she was shrieking. You guys saw the clip like, oh, fuck. And she she was uncomfortable. She, you know, so, so not everybody's going to be good at public speaking. I understand that. You really should work on those oddities of character, though, rather than just saying, well, this is who I am. Like, I used to be socially awkward, but I worked on my character. A lot of actually how I became better at public speaking and communicating with people was I was a bartender for a long time. I was in the service industry. So pretty much everything I know about life, I learned from having to communicate with people because my income depended on it. So, uh, you know, that and I uh, obviously had like basic manners and etiquette and respect for people. But I really just learned how to listen. And I realized that all social anxiety, almost 90% of social anxiety comes from when you're focused on how someone else feels about you. So if you get out of your headspace and stop worrying what other people are thinking about you and you start focusing on how can I make them more comfortable? How can I increase their enjoyment of this space? Almost 90% of your social anxiety will disappear completely. You know, when I was uh, first starting out performing, I was really nervous, so nervous and socially awkward. And it was because I was stuck in my own headspace thinking, what are they thinking of me? Do I suck? <laughs> Does this music suck? Do they hate this? <laughs> Instead of thinking, how can I have them have the best experience? How can I take all of my love and joy and, and bliss and, and just beam it onto them so they can feel so happy and and leave here feeling uplifted and having their day, you know, be better because they sat here with me for a little bit. Once I changed my perspective and focused on how can I cheer them up and how can I give instead of how can I receive, totally changed my shows and catapulted me into a different echelon of performances and Honestly, like everything in my life benefited from that, like my my pocketbook, my mental health, um, my personal experiences and relationships with other people, my ability to build friendships. Everything came from working on that character flaw or defect that I had of, of, of thinking about myself. So had she done that because you noticed she really wasn't able to engage with the crowd, I think that that one thing could have saved her and could have bought her enough time. Because the truth is, nobody knows what the hell you're doing behind a DJ deck. Most mainstream artists, like Calvin Harris, for example, they're playing a pre-recorded set. They're not live mixing. Nobody knows what the hell you're doing behind a DJ deck, especially from an artist like Grimes, where she is really out there and very ethereal and her aesthetic is very abstract. Like she totally could have played this off right in the beginning where the music stopped and she just hit the button. She could have picked up the microphone and said anything like Coachella. I love you. Are you all having a good time? And then everyone would have gone nuts. Most people are on drugs. They don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> she could have totally saved this. She could have salvaged it. Then when she played another song, she could have worked that because the reason she gave for all of her music being off was that she messed with her USB right before she right before her set. So she updated her, her USB, which if you don't DJ and you're not familiar, I always have backups of my USBs. I have backups for backups for backups. So I'll have a couple hard drives. I have my big external hard drive with all my music on it in its original format. She put it on a different USB right before her set and it didn't upload properly. Again, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Fuck you. 
And so all of her music was distorted. And instead of being at like, you know, 120 BPMs or whatever, it was double. So it came out screeching fast. She could have worked the audience and made it seem like this was part of her plan and just slowly worked the music back down to tempo and then got it to a reasonable level. And again, like she could have, it would have made transitioning hard because she didn't know what was coming on the deck next, but that's why we have headphones. So we can pre-hear the next track. We can listen to it and adjust the tempo from there. She could have, if she had been better at being calm in a crisis, communicating and developing that resilience of personality, she could have salvaged this performance. So that's what I would have done differently. She didn't have a backup plan. I'll have my USBs and then I'll also have a playlist just as an emergency because I have been in the middle of a DJ set before and my whole deck stopped. It, it just went dead. I don't know what happened. There was a glitch in my computer. For whatever reason, it just shut down. But luckily, I had a set list, a backup playlist open on my computer and I have a separate one on my iPad ready to go. So all I have to do, if everything shuts down and the DJ apocalypse happens and there's no music, all I have to do is hit boom, play, and then it will transition to that. And I can salvage that and make it look like I just stopped the music on purpose. So, I mean, it's hard to say in the situation, it's easy to critique from the outside when that's not happening to you in front of millions of people. I feel so bad for her. I feel like people treated her so poorly and so unfairly. Um, if you are an artist or you are a DJ, everyone's calling her a fake DJ. She's not a fake DJ. There are no fake DJs. Like, shut up. Stop being an asshole. <laughs> like, people are so cruel. The internet is such a cruel place. And I always say, those who can't do, critique. And those who critique deserve a special place in hell. Because you're basically like do nothing bitches. You just sit. It's so easy to sit back and critique and not be in there. Like when people critique my music on my YouTube or whatever, they tell me all kinds of stuff. You can't sing. I had a podcast the other day talking about how to legally stop paying taxes and someone caught on there and was commenting. You guys can go read it and see if it makes any freaking sense to you. But someone was like, don't be fooled by her. She's a liar and uses her sensuality to manipulate people and pretends she likes to care about people, but she's a manipulator and a void and a leftist purist at heart. Like me, a woke leftist. I, I don't even know what to say about that. If you've been following me at all, you know that I'm like light years away from, I don't know how anyone could possibly construe my content, my very, very deeply conservative, rebellious, anti-government content as leftist, but there you have it. About 10% of the people who follow you are clinically insane, so you can't take that into heart. But I know that that person is just a lunatic and a loser. Like, I love when David Goggins goes off about internet trolls. He's just like, you're a fucking bitch. If you go on people's, you know, YouTube pages and sit on the internet and critique them, you're a little bitch. The thing I'll say right now to people listen to this, a real person, a real alpha, a real go-getter, they ain't saying shit about nobody. That's why you will never, ever hear me dropping somebody's name, running my mouth about somebody. I don't know what you went through. I don't know what you're going through. I didn't wear the shoes you wore when you were a kid. I didn't grow up in your fucked up house. I didn't have your fucked up family. I don't know shit about you. So guess what I do? Shut the fuck up. Because real men don't say shit. Because first of all, we're too busy trying to grind and be better. Correct. Second of all, unless we know what we know, we know we shut our fucking mouths. But nowadays, there's not many real men who, who, who live by that creed of like, if you're on social media running your fucking mouth and shit, you're just a bitch. Correct. You're, you're honestly, and that, that's not me trying to be some after school special shit. Mm -hmm. You really are a bitch. Real men ain't doing it. Real men don't care about that gossipy bitch. <laughs> I know that you're a little bitch. Andrew Tate talks about that. So I always ask people, I'll be like, hey, show me where your podcast is so I can support you. Hey, where's your music page so I can support you? Hey, uh, 
send me some of your tracks so I can play them while I'm DJing. I would love to support you because I support other people who are doing their best in life. I support other people who are trying. I uplift people. I, I help support them and give them a bolster and lift them up. That's how we see the greatest version of others and also in ourselves. When you give people, sometimes they just need a knee up. They just need you to bolster them just a little bit. When you give people a little bit of a lift, I promise that light will reflect back on you tenfold and your life will transform. And it never comes, good things never come from ripping other people to shreds who are just doing their best. And also at the end of the day, you can think whatever you want about Grimes, but she's going to go back to her million dollar mansion and all of her alimony from Elon Musk and just live her best life. She doesn't need your opinions. She's out there trying to create something for you to enjoy. So maybe, just maybe, stop being a jerk and give people the benefit of the doubt. Give people a break. Give people some freaking room, for God's sakes. Like, have some grace. I I think that life is so short, and there's no point in wasting it tearing someone down. What do you gain from that other than being stuck in your own small, sad, lonely, dark? Fill your world with light beam it onto others. It's going to come back to you tenfold and your life will transform and you're going to have a much better time. That's all I have to say about that. All right. Cheers, you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the page. It is Adrian Rose Music with the Freedom Podcast. I put out videos once a week, sometimes more. There's also a ton of music on there as well. If you guys have a topic you want me to discuss, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have a song you guys want me to sing or cover, let me know. Or if you have a birthday or a special day coming up, let me know and I'll make a little cameo for you because I love you and you're gorgeous and I want you to have a good day and I want the world to love one another. Life is short. It is like freakishly short, okay? Don't waste your beautiful God-given energy hurting others. Use it to uplift people, okay? All right. I love you guys. I hope you have the best day ever. I hope today miracles happen for you. I hope you experience love and joy and peace and beam that onto other people. And I hope tomorrow's even better. I hope every day of your life continues to be better than the last one. All right. Cheers, guys. God bless.